people at this meeting, so bear with me. Um, Barry here has prepared a little speech that just surrounds the whole situation around the health care bill. And uh, I've skimmed over the 2,300 pages of it and picked apart as much as I can, so I'm going to give you guys some of the information, some of the stuff that's really in there, and hopefully I can answer most of the questions that you guys have. We'll go ahead and let Barry give his speech now. Hi, I'm Barry Miller. I live in Hinsdale. Um, and and I, I did some research, and I found an article that really hit it for me. Uh, Made, there were things that I hadn't really thought about, um, about where our money goes for health care, and, uh, and this helped me, and so I wanted to share it with you and, and see if, you know, maybe uh, some of it will resonate with you. So, uh, if you want to fix the disaster that is called the American health care system, the first thing to do is clearly point out what its major failings are. And there are two of these. The first is cost. America is one of the most expensive places, or possibly the most expensive place in the world to get sick or injured. The corollary of that is that it is one of the best places to make a killing if you are in the medical business. Uh, whether it's a doctor, a hospital company, com hospital company, a pharmaceutical firm or a nursing home owner. <laughs> and there's stuff I hadn't thought about, but whoa, nursing home owners. You know, what an easy thought, right? From what I know. <laughs> anyway, the second is access. One in six Americans, a total of 50 million people at the latest count, have no way to pay for that care. Too young for Medicare, too well off for Medicaid. Uh, but too poor to buy private health insurance, or too sick to be admitted into the plan, into a plan, or employed by a company that doesn't provide health benefits. Uh, these people would get no medical care until they get so sick that they are brought into a hospital emergency room where they get treated, often too late, at public expense, or at the hospital's expense. So there, there's money right there, you know. We're paying for this stuff, you know. We're pay, we pay for people going to the emergency room. And, uh, you know, that's, that's outrageous. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's see. Next, any reform of this atrocious system, system, in quotations, must address these two major failings or it is no reform at all. And that's where all the various versions of Obamacare fall flat. Simply put, you cannot solve either of these problems by leaving the payment system for medical care in the hands of the private health insurance. And I did this, actually I practiced this and videotaped myself given this presentation. And at this point I put a picture of a healthcare facility, healthcare office building in Chicago. And I, I looked up what was the, what was the uh, Fortune 500 highest uh, health care healthcare insurance company. And it came up to be my own. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's Chicago, it's uh, a Blue Shield, a Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. And these buildings are outrageous. I mean, they're just outrageous. So anyway, I'm sorry, I had to vent. I'll get back to the point. Uh, so simply put, you cannot solve either of these problems by leaving the payment system for medical care in the hands of the private insurance industry, since the whole paradigm of insurance is to make money by keeping high-risk people out and of the insurance pool, and by keeping reimbursements and coverage for premium payers as low as possible. So, you know, they don't want to give us, you know, deductibles and all this crap. And, and uh, so, I mean, like, oh, yeah. Whew. Having a so-called public option plan working in competition with private insurance plans will not solve this problem. Either the public option will become like the private options, trimming benefits and rejecting some applicants, or it will become a dumping ground for all the high-cost, high-risk people that the private sector insurance industry doesn't want. At that point, the public plan will become a huge cost burden on the taxpayer, who will begin demanding the cut back in benefits 
and provides taking us right back to where we started and now with this phony baloney thing that the insurance companies want and pay for. Anyway, the fact that the Obama administration and the Democratic Congress are both raising the issue of the high cost of health care reform, in quotations, reform, and are talking about ways to raise revenues to pay for it tells us all we need to know about the alleged reform schemes they are contemplating. They are doomed, and even if implemented, will not work. Real reform in the American health care system would not cost money. It would save money. There's a level of dishonesty in what passes for the debate over health care reform in both Congress, and, and when I did this, I groaned every time I said the, the Congress, groaned. the media, <clears throat> that is stunning in its brazenness and or venality. I mean, you know, that's a good word, venality. Whew. I have to look that one up. I, I mean, it sounds good. I think which is really fun to do. I don't know if anybody's done this, but have you ever just thought about a word and looked it up? And, you know, important words like, uh, you know, uh, well, I, I don't know, whatever. I, that's another topic. Uh, of course, real reform would cost more money in government spending, but that is because real reform would remove the cost of medical <coughs> care from both employers and from workers, okay? Employers don't have to pay, the workers don't have to pay, who over the last 20 years have been shouldering an increasing share of their own medical care. I mean, we've been paying our own medical care anyway, you know? Uh, so there's more money. And I put dollar signs in here whenever I thought about it. I went, oh yeah, that's money. And that shift would mean more profits for U.S. companies, which would free up more money for wages. And it would mean less money deducted from paychecks, meaning higher incomes for workers. So, and, and uh, yeah, I think that's a great one, you know. Uh, the uh, labor unions will have something to, uh, to work with. Uh, anyway, President Obama had a, if President Obama had any political courage at all, he'd simply get on TV and say this. I will create a plan that will cover everyone, lift the burden of paying for health care from individuals and employers, and have the government pay for it all. You, the taxpayer, will pay for this plan with higher taxes, but you will no longer have any significant medical bills, which is money. It's no significant medical bills. How much money is that? It could be a lot. Uh, you will no longer have health insurance premiums. There's a lot of money there too. Deducted from your paycheck, your employer will no longer be paying money for medical coverage. And you will never have to worry about losing health benefits again, even if you are laid off. Incidentally, eliminating employer-funded health insurance would go a long way towards allowing workers to fight to have unions and strike for contracts by ending the threat that they would lose their benefits. So yeah, that was the union thing. Of course, do not do that. to do that, the President would have to be talking about what is variously known as national health care or a single-payer plan, in which the government is the insurer of health care for all. And I just want to thank Dave Lindorf, uh, who is a Philadelphia-based journalist and columnist. Uh, he's the author of Marketplace Medicine, The Rise of the For-Profit, and I, I can't remember if that was hospitals or what, what the word got cut off on the Internet. In his latest book, the case for impeachment at St. Martin's Press. His work is available at thiscan'tbehappening.net. So that's the end of my uh, presentation. And uh, I know that the word single payer is, is sets off maybe somebody's feelings about big government, you know, in our in our faces and all that. Uh, and there and so I did some research and uh, and I and I've seen some differences in healthcare. Uh, and one is can Canada versus the UK. In the UK, uh, the government provides the doctors. The doctors work for the government. And, uh, and so their thing is totally socialized medicine because, the, you know, but in Canada, the doctors are all work for themselves. And the only uh, thing that the government does is what the 